Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm so excited because I'm going to be talking about something that was a really big issue for me when I first started bullet journaling. And I feel like I've finally figured it out, I guess, or found a way that works for me. So I wanted to share it with you. But before I jump into that, if you're not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I upload videos every single Tuesday and Thursday. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to use a bullet journal monthly log. This was something that I searched a lot about when I was first starting out with bullet journaling and I couldn't really find anything that made sense sense to me, but I didn't really understand the original bullet journal monthly log system. So I thought for today's video, I would go into more detail about what I've found after your bullet journaling. But with that being said, let's just jump right over into my notebook. Just wanted to take you into my notebooks and show you what I am currently doing and how I use my monthly log in my bullet journal. So hopefully you can find some of these tips helpful. The first thing I wanted to mention was the book that I just finished reading. It was the bullet journal method by Ryder Carroll. He is the creator of the original bullet journal system. The way he describes a monthly log in here is this collection helps you step back and take a breath before diving into the coming month. It offers a bird's eye view of the things you have to do as well as your available time. Basically it consists of a calendar page and a tasks page. For me when I was first learning this system I was kind of confused by it. I felt like everything I saw on Pinterest and Instagram didn't use this. It kind of used more of a traditional calendar system. This was my very first monthly layout. I got this inspiration from boho berry. It kind of was a lot of space to take up for barely using things. I tried to condense the calendar in this April month, then was too small. I don't know, I just never really found the monthly calendar layout beneficial. I found it very cramped, I found it like messy. I like the watercolor that I did. I add some watercolor into my bullet journal and I do have another video if you're interested in seeing what that looks like as far as how I use watercolor and what I think of it in my bullet journal. But this just was very restrictive and it felt kind of more similar to a traditional planner, which is what I was trying to get away from. This is what I did. I do actually have a plan with me of how I laid this all out if you are interested. I'll link it in the description box below. This was the first time since I started my bullet journal that I did the traditional bullet journal monthly log layout. I was more productive this month than I had been like the two months prior to it. It was crazy. I have the normal layout that the bullet journal method suggests. I have all of the days of the month going down on the left hand side and then I have the days of the week corresponding as well. These lines indicate uh, the end of the week and at this time I was still working at a full-time job so I do have my hours here listed and highlighted. So that's a really good way to if you do work full-time mark your hours I made it highlighted so I could easily see my work schedule and everything was just very neat and in one place And I could just flip here and see everything at a glance, but this kept me so much more organized This is my bullet journal for 2019 and what I do for my monthly logs This is what I'm currently doing for this month and honestly, I absolutely love it so far It's working really well for me. I'm finding this just incredibly helpful So since October I have done this traditional monthly log layout October November December and now January I use this as a planning for the month ahead since I do my planning day-to-day -day, like the traditional bullet journaling system So I do a daily log. I don't set anything up ahead of time um, everything's done the day of. So you could see this day I had a lot more to do compared to this day it was a lot less. So I don't set up my weeks in advance. If I have something that falls outside of the current day, I put it in my monthly log. So for example, yesterday I made an appointment to get my oil changed. So all I did was just move that to today's date. And then when I made my daily log for today, I was able to just put my oil change was at 4 p.m. So it's a really great way to see everything at a glance and it doesn't take up as many pages or time as doing the big calendar layouts. If that works for you, that's absolutely great. Make your bullet journal your own. That's the whole point of this entire system. But for me, what I found most effective with my bullet journal and how I use my bullet journal effectively was by doing this monthly log. Easiest way to set it up is you're just gonna write the dates going down the left-hand side, and then you're gonna write the day of the week following that and then I usually leave a space just so there's some room and I'll just write down what I have going on for that day. It's more so for appointments, due dates, meetings, anything like that goes in this monthly log. Now if it's something that I need to do throughout the month as far as tasks or things that need to get done it goes into my monthly task list. So this is just a running list of all the tasks and things that I need to get done for the month of January. I don't put to do items in my monthly log. This is just for date specific items or things that need 
need to be accomplished on certain days. This is for, okay, I need to get my oil changed. I need to book a flight for a trip that I'm taking, all of this type of stuff. And then what I've been doing is I've been doing a very clear, clean cut habit tracker and it's very simple. I used to do these huge elaborate habit trackers. This was just so discouraging for me to actually stick to any habits and it never actually stuck. But with this, I only have three habits that I'm tracking and they're my three top priorities for the month. So I have those here and then I just color in a box when I have done it for that day. Um, and hopefully by the end of the month, this will be a nice pretty box of black. <laughs> this is a lot simpler. So this is my entire month at a glance. I no longer have six pages that I'm currently using to do my habit tracking, my goals and all that good stuff. Everything's in two pages. That's what I'm currently doing. That's what I find the most helpful. I'm sure this will change throughout the year, but that's the great thing about the bullet journal system is it's okay if it changes. It's yours, you should make it your own. Take some of these tips, try them out. If they don't work for you, that's cool. Tweak it and make it your own. That's the great thing about this system is it can truly be what you want it to be. It doesn't need to be artistic. It doesn't need to be super colorful. It doesn't need to be only black and white. It can be whatever you need to make it. It should work for your life. So if it's not working right now or you're getting stressed or discouraged, it usually means you just need to tweak something. This system can work for everybody. It just needs to be what you need it to be not necessarily what's on Pinterest and Instagram. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs, thumbs, thumbs up. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe. Like I said, I'm uploading videos every single Tuesday and Thursday all about my bullet journal planner life and keeping myself organized. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.